There we go. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, good to be with you on this Wednesday morning. Um, this is July 15th. Wow. Uh, we are halfway through the month of July already. Uh, and <laughs> um, crazy how quickly time flies by. Uh, we'll wait for our feed to populate here this morning and see if anybody's going to jump on board. I know there are a few prayer requests this morning I saw already, so... Uh, there's Deb. Good morning, Deb and Joe. Uh, good to see you guys. Uh, Bertie, always welcome. And Lou, got the crew on board here this morning. Let's see who else we could jump on. Anybody else? Hi, hi Carol. Good morning. Good to see you. Or see the picture of you, I guess it would be, of your dog, maybe? Is that what that is? Uh, looks like it. Uh, <laughs> uh, I think that's a dog there. Oops, I can't leave. I don't want to leave. stay on this page. I better stay on this page. Messing around too much. Uh, good morning, Joe. Good to see you. I've got a few people on this morning, 11 of us. So and some folks on the, uh, uh, the phone as well. Uh, so um, we are continuing our look at the Moravian text. Uh, this morning, and maybe you already uh, had the opportunity to read through this scripture. Uh, hopefully you did. Oh, it's a rabbit. Ah, nice. Uh, what's the rabbit's name, Carol? You'll have to let us know. Um, maybe you've already uh, read through those uh, those verses, uh, and then we'll, we'll take a look, a deeper look at um, the section from Luke chapter 9 as we've been working our way through, uh, through that uh, these last few days. Um, so let me just begin with these verses for the day and see how these kind of tie everything uh, together. Uh, you'll kind of begin to see that as you read and get into Scripture. Uh, Smitty, ah, Smitty the rabbit, I like that. Um, you begin to see everything uh, begin to tie together uh, each day as you get into Scripture and you see how God's Word really ties together and begin to, begin to apply it to our own lives. And... Uh, see how it really impacts us in our day-to-day -day, uh, life. So from Proverbs 19.21, uh, the book of Proverbs, uh, this book of wisdom, um, it's always kind of straight shooting. It kind of just tells it like it is. And it's always good to, uh, always good to hear that. Uh, so, from, so from Proverbs 19.21, the human mind may devise many plans, but it is, the purpose, it is the purpose of the Lord that will be established. Let me read that again. The human mind may devise many plans, but it is the purpose of the Lord that will be established. See how that, you'll see how that fits in a little bit today with uh, Peter on the Mount of Transfiguration. And then from 1 Peter, uh, Peter writes these words from uh, 1 Peter 4, 7, and 8. Therefore be serious and discipline yourself, for the sake of your prayers, above all, main, maintain constant love for one another. Uh, therefore, be serious and discipline yourselves for the sake of your prayers. Above all, maintain a constant love for one another. Uh, in these words, we begin to see how God's plans are not our plans. Um, and that we have to be, uh, as Paul says, or Peter says here, uh, we have to be diligent about it. Um, and recognize this because it's easy to slip back into our, our own way of thinking and uh, our own way of, of living. And um, I think the, the, the thing that struck me this morning as I was reading through Luke chapter 9, the Transfiguration event, is the question of, of who are we listening to? Who are we listening to? Uh, there are many voices that are clamoring for our attention these days. Um, we don't maybe don't even know who to listen to anymore. Oh, it's, we're so unsure, uncertain. Uh, but oftentimes, as as the song or the proverb says, we can begin to listen to our own words, and they can be at times misleading. And I think we see that happening in this text for today. As Peter Peter listens to his own kind of words, his own thinking, instead of listening to Jesus. And when we listen uh, to Jesus, we can discover again what, what God's plans and purposes are. 
uh, and that they will be established and we can trust in that. So let me just read for you from uh, Luke chapter 9, beginning at verse, verse 28. Uh, it's a transition. It begins with a transition phrase. It says, about eight days after Jesus said this. Uh, so you say, well, what did he say? <laughs> it's important to look at that and go back, and you'll remember. Uh, it was this feeding of the 5,000, and then Jesus asked his disciples, who do the crowd say that I am? The people had just been fed. And they said, you know, some say John the Baptist or another prophet raised from the dead. Um, and uh, then Jesus says, well, who do you say that I am? And Peter says, you're the Christ. And then Jesus goes on to explain what his mission will be. And you remember, uh, Peter wasn't all that thrilled about that. Um, and then Jesus says, you know, you must take up your cross and, and follow me. You must be willing to follow and listen to God's plans, not your own. No heartburn, Joe. I have no heartburn today. Uh, I don't know why you keep thinking I have heartburn, but I do not have heartburn. Uh, <laughs> all is good. Um, just talking a lot and uh, breathing in, I guess. Um, so, um, where were we? Um, so, uh, Jesus says, you got to take up your cross and, and follow, follow me. Uh, and, and, and then he says, you will not taste of death uh, before you see God's kingdom. And you say, well, whoa, uh, how does that happen? Well, this next section explains that really, uh, really well. Um, so let me just read that for you. About eight days after Jesus said this, he took Peter, John, and James with him and went up onto a mountain to pray. As he was praying, the appearance of his face changed and his clothes became as bright as a flash of lightning. Two men, Moses and Elijah, appeared in glorious splendor, talking with Jesus. They spoke about his departure, which was about which he was about to bring to fulfillment at Jerusalem. Peter and his companions were very sleepy, but when they became fully awake, they saw his glory and the two men standing with him. As the men were leaving Jesus, Peter said to him, Master, it is good for us to be here. Let us put up three shelters, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what he was saying. While he was speaking, a cloud appeared and enveloped them, and they were afraid as they entered the cloud. A voice came from the cloud saying, This is my son whom I am chosen. Listen to him. Listen to him. When the voice had spoken, they found that Jesus was alone. The disciples kept this to themselves and told no one at that time what they had seen. So the, in this supernatural event, uh, they are, they're seeing God's kingdom come. The disciples are, as they stand on the mountain of transfiguration, they're seeing Jesus for who he really is. There is clarity in their confusion. And we hear this phrase from the cloud which says, listen to him. So who are we, who are we listening to? Are we listening to the voices of this world that say all is lost, there is no hope? Are we listening to our own voice uh, that can say all kinds of things to us and make all kinds of plans and think we have it all under control? Or are we listening to the voice of Jesus? You see, Jesus, I, I believe, gives, gives clarity in times of confusion. And I, I think, I don't know if the disciples were confused necessarily, but you, you kind of see some of that. They were like, whoa, what's going, what's going on here? Um, and Peter is like, well, let's, let's, let's build, uh, you know, um, let's build these, these shelters. It's, it's good for us to be here. And Jesus says, well, no, that's not my father's plan. My father's plan is to go to Jerusalem and, and carry out the mission that, that I have been give it. And so when, when Jesus speaks, he gives, he gives clarity. Uh, he reveals to us his true identity. He reveals to us who he, he truly is. 
that he is the Son of God, and we need to listen to him. But he also reveals to us what God's plan is. Um, it says there in the text that uh, Moses and Elijah spoke with Jesus by his departure. Another translation for that is his exodus. Uh, and you'll remember, taking that back to the Old Testament, God's rescue plan, how God saved Israel from the hands of the Egyptians. And so Jesus and Moses and Elijah are talking about Jesus' rescue plan, him going to Jerusalem, him going to the cross, where he will rescue the world from sin and, and death. And because we, we know who Jesus is, because we know what his plan is, as, as the, the proverb, proverb writer says, the, the purpose of the Lord will be established. We can listen and we can follow in the way of, of Jesus. We can follow uh, according to his plan and not our, our own. And that brings, <laughs> that brings peace to our, our lives. Um, it, it brings uh, a sense of relief knowing that God's in control and that God wants good for us and that we can be people who, who love others because God has, has loved us. So who are you going to listen to today, I guess is the question. Um, a lot of opportunities to, to listen. Um, and so uh, who, who are you going to listen to and whose ways are you going to follow? Uh, in our prayers for today, uh, pray for Chuck. Uh, oh, uh, can't remember Chuck. Uh, Henry, Chuck Henry. Pray for Chuck, and uh, he's struggling with recovery from knee surgery, the pain that goes along with that. And if anybody's been through that, you know it's brutal when you're in the midst of it. So we pray for Chuck. Pray for Lou for her leg, healing for that. Pray for Brenda and her family uh, as they continue to mourn uh, the loss of Brenda's father. Uh, we pray for young Molly, uh, Molly Vandergriff. Molly will be seeing the cardiologist today, and we just pray for a good result for her. She uh, had, was born with a hole in her heart, and just praying that that hole will be mended on its own. And we continue to lift up uh, our friend Barb Glencoe as she is now dealing with uh, radiation and chemo. Uh, on a daily basis for the next six weeks. And for those of you who have been through that, you know that that is no picnic either. And so we, we pray for, for Barb. We pray uh, protection around us as we gather together for uh, in-person worship. And we are really grateful for that and thankful for that and the opportunity to be together. Uh, we just ask God's protection around that. Uh, we pray for uh, some good news. I think I heard read this morning about maybe a possible vaccine, and we pray that that would work uh, so that we could be free of this virus uh, in the weeks and months and years uh, ahead. Uh, let me uh, let me pray, and then uh, I'll send you on your way for the day. This is from the Moravian text prayer. It says, "Wise Father, you make everything work together for our good, and for your will to be established on earth as it is in heaven." Help us always remember that your perfect plans give us hope and love for one another. Lord, today, uh, as we hear the voice of, of Jesus, we want to listen to him. This one who calls us to come down off the mountain, and to, to go uh, into the valley and to the every days of life, knowing that we're not alone, that he is with us as he calls us to take up our cross and, and follow him. We know, Lord, that the way of the cross is not easy. It's the way of sacrifice. It's a way of struggle. We feel that inside of ourselves. Uh, we battle that each and every day. Uh, but we also feel it in the world in which we live. Lord, we give our lives to you today, knowing that you have given your life for us and that, that we have the promise of, of peace and hope and joy in our lives today because of Jesus. Lord, we seek to listen to your plans and not our own, knowing that you are wise and good and you want good for us. Lord, we pray for your people today. We pray for Chuck uh, as he continues to battle knee pain from his surgery. We just ask, Lord, that you would bring him relief from that. Keep him motivated to do his PT. And uh, 
and, and, and to continue to work that that leg as it needs to be worked. For Brenda, uh, Lord, we just ask your, your blessing over that family uh, as, as they deal with grief, loss and grief and pain. Uh, we are grateful for the hope that goes beyond this world. We pray for Lou and her leg, uh, that you would bring healing. And to all who are suffering from uh, ailments, Lord, we pray for healing for them. We pray for Molly, the young baby, um, as, uh, as, as she goes in for a chat today, and just pray that that hole in her heart would be healed. Um, and for our friend Barb, uh, Lord, as she continues this battle with cancer, uh, for uh, stamina and strength in the midst of the chemo and radiation, Lord, which, will, which wipes the body out, Lord, uh, give, her, give her an extra measure of your, uh, your strength uh, in these days, Lord. Continue to pray, Lord, for your protection around us and your people in the midst of this pandemic. Uh, we seek to be the church, Lord, as you do a new thing in us and through us. Um, and we ask your blessing upon that this day. Uh, we pray all this now in, in Jesus' name. Uh, amen. So enjoy your day. Um, have fun with Smitty the rabbit. And, uh, and just enjoy... Uh, God's good gifts to you today as you listen to the voice of Jesus. Go in his peace. Have a great day. Bye-bye.